Okay, welcome back everybody. I've um, been working for the last, I don't know, about six weeks on these little things. Um, I did first try Plaster of Paris as a binder, but um, I was alright for the first day in Electrolyte, but after that it would start going soft and um, uh, sort of not work so well. The resistance would go up, so that led me to making some little brick cement pads. I've got a little mould here I use. Um, so the contents of these three, these are just sand and cement. So uh, that one there is water content of 0.5 to cement ratio. This one here is um, 0.9 water content and 0.7 water content. Uh, so this one with the lowest content, it's not too bad, it's a porous, but you can break it apart. It is hard, but you can break it, but it's porous, which we sort of want for a battery. This other one, which was 0.7%, uh, as you can see, it's quite firm, not as porous, but it's still breakable. They're about the same hardness. And the one with the most content of water, that's pretty tough. So you can't break that one. Um, the sand was dry, so there was no moisture in the sand. So once I've got my little sample tests made and worked out what I sort of wanted, I had to throw all that data out because um, when you go to use carbon, um, some some test ones, which failed, they um, turned to powder. No good. So, um, don't work so well. But, instead of um, this one here, this is... 2.55 grams of graphite, 6.5 grams of any old carbon you got. The um, material has to be dry, um, 5 grams of cement, and 7 grams of water. Longs, your carbon's dry. So what you've got to do is um, mix the dry materials with together. So you've got 2.55 grams of graphite. 6.5 grams of carbon, any sort of carbon, and 5 grams of cement. Mix it thoroughly dry, then put in 7 grams of water, and um, this one here for ohms, I think it's about 0.8 something, I mean 8 ohms. So can you see this? Let's set this up. Okay, it's on the 200 ohms. Oops, put that in vision. Over here. Uh, just there and there. We're right down to... Oh, I could push harder, but I don't want to break the pad. So around about 7.5 ohms. Oh, a bit there, 7.5 ohms. Over that distance. I'm now using heat shrink to attach it. I was um, using the stainless pads. I've been testing these for over like three months probably. That's um, my results. So the stainless 316, it's okay, but it starts forming this rusty color, which reduces the resistance and the seal fails. Oh, and it's got a little backing pad. So I went to um, graphite actually. There's a piece of graphite there and you need a backing pad to stiffen it all up. So it's all firm and some heat shrink, works great. That holds it right down perfectly. Um, I've got another cell running in there, we'll go in in a minute. Um, good thing about the cement is you can add your um, nickel oxyhydroxide into here and it should stay in there as a binder and work well. I'm going to try to Flake this nickel off of this um, old cell and crush it off as well and mix it in. 
I'm also going to try another one where yeah, um, I just chop this stuff, this is nickel wire, in real small pieces and embed it into the carbon as well. So we'll move in sign and I'll get back. Okay, back in sign. So the cell that's running right now uh, measured up 5.4 ohms over the same distance. And that one was 2.55 grams of graphite, 6.5 grams of carbon, 4 grams of cement, so it's 1 gram less than the other one. This one, I'm going to test the two, these are the two variations. I've made other ones with different ratios. I did start off with 3.5 grams of water, but that was that flaky one you've seen out there as well. Uh, 6 grams of water for this one, uh, running right here. And if you can see this, we have been running for an hour and 17 minutes. We're only 20 milliamps, but that's still all right for the size of the cell. It um, runs for, the first charge it had, ran for four hours and 51 minutes, nine, 97 milliamp hours and 82 milliwatt hours with an average voltage of 0.81 the um average voltage has been going up through the tests we're at test number eight now and um, three hour charges bring it back to pretty much close to the very first run it's just standard carbon it's actually the um redhead brick axe that went into the furnace <clears throat> so it's just um, an average carbon <laughs> too fancy i don't think and um, it's in the old solution of the electrolyte I was testing those cells so it probably has some nickel oxyhydroxide floating around in the liquid which may ab absorb into the cell and the negative side is just a piece of zinc I've managed to get the electrolyte so it doesn't consume the zinc now so that's, that's been in there for like three months testing various cells these are the failed ones, um, they're breakable. I, um, when I was putting this one together just then, I dropped it from this height and um, it didn't break, so it's quite strong. I'm surprised it didn't break because the other ones have dropped only a little bit and even just holding that and putting the rubber band on it broke them. So the one with seven grams of water and five grams of cement is quite strong. I haven't dropped the one we're running, but that's set up similar to that one, but I'm using rubber bands there. So, something interesting. So this um, opens up an avenue for adding all sorts of um, active material like here. Perusian blue, nickel oxyhydroxide, and other elements. I haven't tried adding well, I haven't tried making a zinc side yet. But I'm making leap ways. This is a cheap alternative. I think I need a slightly smaller heat shrink thing than I got. That will suck it in there. It's pretty tight though. Can't pull that out. Um only problem is I don't want to really use the um, craft foil. It's a bit hard to get and expensive. But um, I have some Lego bricks in acetone. I thought I'd sacrifice um, six Lego bricks there. So I might be able to put some graphite in there and make a pad as well. That's ABS. Lego bricks are ABS. Plastic. So I'm not sure on that. Seems to be a waste of graphite as well, because graphite's also dear. So maybe that's all right, graph foil. But the results aren't too bad. So it's going to be a toss up between this cell, which I haven't ran yet, and this cell here to get the exact amount. And then I'm pretty sure I can add a spoon of um, active material without affecting any of this ratio, maybe. So um, see how that goes later on during the testing. This is just a quick video.
to update that normal cement. It's just your Portland cement holds up in potassium hydroxide. <clears throat> I've had one of them in there for six weeks and it didn't fall apart. Except for it's only, it's just it's weakness. Oh, see that one's as hard as a rock, but you can break it. Took a bit to break that one. But that one wasn't very good. That had a higher cement content and stuff. So when you add this much water, it's um, more like a putty and not mixable. So you gotta just stir it up heat and you can actually compress it into that little mold thing I had made up for now. So it's not sludgy. If you make it sludgy, it falls apart. So main factor is how much the carbon absorbs the water as well, which will take it away from the um, hydration effect of the water and the cement content. So with your carbon, it may be different to this carbon and the absorption rate. So you'll have to work on that. These are just base figures, but cement, it's working. All right, thanks for watching. I forgot to notice one important factor. Um, when drying, you have to wrap it in glad wrap or just, I just put a piece of glad wrap over the top and weigh it down. Now you need to leave it under there for three days or the hydration of the cement, because of the carbon, I think will evaporate the water and you won't get the bonding. So one important factor I forgot.